Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the review of yesterday's action in the Europa League and the Europa Conference League. As you can hear my voice is getting actually better, my energies are lifting up as well. But then you have your favorite team in a game that you didn't expect much being totally steamrolled. That didn't help proceedings in any case. Uh, it was a little bit alleviated that I have, have to say. I think it was again a highly enjoyable evening with at least one, if not a couple of games in there that were absolutely nuts. And uh, a neutral stream in many, 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 many ways. Uh, as you can see, Lodez Lusk is nowhere to be seen here. Um, I'm wearing Pauk. I said, okay, I need to go at least with one black and white team and Pauk actually won. Beautiful jersey. So there you go. And I still stay with my black, beloved black and white colors. But yeah, uh, let's talk about Lusk and then we'll go through all the other ones. Uh, you know, from, 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 get, 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 it was not under a good start the whole game. I knew that Slavia Prague is a level too high for Lusk. And it has to be also said, and I probably haven't made too little point of that, although uh, personally I was thinking it. The group that Lusk had, I mean, you cannot get a sweeter and easier group ever again. That you got uh, five wins and a draw out of that one. Uh, I'm not saying it was wholly expected, but it did not come as a huge su su surprise. Uh, with only Maccabi Tel Aviv being an opponent that I, I, I would say, yeah, that win in Tel, in Tel Aviv, that was a big performance. That absolutely was a big, big performance, but the other opponents were not worthy of any European competition. I'm sorry for Helsinki and Alash Kert, but uh, you were not worthy of that competition. Unfortunately, I gotta say. So, uh, having said that, and then, you know, the draw, I know Slavia is a really good team. This is a team that has been either in the Champions League or very much knocking it. Even in a, a group with Barcelona, uh, Inter and Dortmund a, a few seasons ago, they didn't disgrace themselves at all. I mean, in fact, they got even a draw at the camp now. Uh, so, uh, I knew this will be a really, really tough opponent. Yes, time has moved on, um, but this is not an easy team. This is the Salzburg of the Czech League. And probably, uh, I, w I would favor Salzburg over Slavia Prague, but given what a horrible record Austrian teams have actually in Prague, no Austrian team has ever won in Prague. There was only a draw, uh, a draw in the mid-90s of Sturm Graz at Slavia. That was it. I knew I'm not going to expect much. Yes, Slavia had many players missing, but Lask had also. Uh, the lineup was a complete uh, so, so, so surprise with uh, Sasha Horvath especially missing. And there I knew, okay, all the dynamism that Lask will want to have is already gone. And so the game, <laughs> I mean... I made the conscious decision of not watching that game only. I went for the conference where they're switching back and forth because um, I wanted one way to know what's going on in the other places as well. But the game, Lask actually started pressing for two minutes <laughs> and the first counter contact, Sor uh, gets into the box, it was nicely played. And yeah, a ball that I gotta say, Schlager needs to save. One nil and from that moment on, Lask could, could not find their way back in, 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 into the It was also not that the former luck player Matzen was in midfield and probably had a lot to tell uh, <laughs> the Slavia coach as well about the team. Um, that it was only a 2 nil at the half against Sor just running and it was assisted by Matzen. Uh, running past everyone just uh, was the perfect story. Uh, it could have been 2 or 3 uh, more uh, in that one. It should have been two more early in the second half when Slavia uh, was a shot far out empty goal he hits the post <laughs> thank you and then a little, a little bit I think all 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 the anchor even hits the cross the, the crossbar out of completely nowhere Hussein Balic makes it 2-1 and you're thinking hmm you might have survived this one 2-1 and suddenly it was almost like the game uh, on Wednesday in Madrid where suddenly uh, Slavia, who had dominated that game left and right, was a little bit shaky. However, just when Lusk was maybe about to get back into the game, uh, horrible defending again, um, going twice through, through legs, all the Inca scores, uh, the 3-1, uh, the and a little, little bit of more uh, horrid defending makes it forward through to, 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 
Um, that game was for every bit of 4 1, then it should be. It could have been really, really, really ugly. Not the worst defeat in European history. Last once lost, I think, 7 0 at Wipesh or something like that way ago. Uh, but at least as far as I can remember, um, this was the most Lusk have been outclassed. Yes, there was the away game at Spurs where it didn't look, look good. Um, when they lost 5 0 at home to United, uh, that was a game right when the corona pandemic started. Where uh, it said like two days before, suddenly no stadiums, al uh, no specs back is allowed. I think uh, there it was an unlucky result that, that, that it was a 5 0 for United. This one was ugly in every regard. And yeah, uh, Lask more or less out of the competition. So yeah, uh, that was the downer. But let's talk about what was happening else. Uh, where And I want to go first Europa League and then we go back to the Conference League. We're already on Wednesday. Uh, Betis against Eintracht Frankfurt. Um, yeah, Betis suddenly in the last two weeks is taking a real nose dive. Uh, losing big, big in the league. I mean, you made it to the cup final, but everything else was already a little bit shaky. Yes, there are injuries and so on. I gotta say that Kostic goal to make it 1 0 the 14th was a beauty. Uh, Fekir pulls back, but right thereafter, Kamada uh, takes, uh, um, take, takes one of a horrible uh, defending in the build up play from Betis. And it's 2 1 Frankfurt. Could have been 3 1 because Boré misses a penalty. So Frankfurt, also a also team that is not as solid in the Bundesliga, but had a good, good showing, gets the 2 1 win at Betis. Uh, a surprise win also on Wednesday was that Lyon uh, went to Porto and beat Porto 1 0. That came out of nowhere for me because I have a high opinion of, of Porto and uh, Lyon has an excellent squad but have not been showing anything that they are of that Qualcomm quality so far. They go there, uh, Paqueta with a uh, headband after crashing with Pepe uh, early in the very early, I think it was within 30 seconds of the first half. Uh, they both hit the heads, both had to uh, get the turban around. Uh, Paqueta scores the winning goal and probably cool, could have been him too. That was surprising. I gotta say, Leon in red doesn't look all that bad. Uh, Leipzig, of course, was a walkover over Spartak. That was not. Sevilla against West Ham. That's it. This was the only early Europa League game. And I gotta say, this was uh, the tight a match between two heavyweight teams that one would expect. Uh, early on, a few, few, a few chances, but uh, it was more and more that uh, Sevilla could assert themselves in their typical way, just taking away um, uh, strengths and chipping away a little bit. Uh, West Ham did not know really what hit them until it was too late when uh, Munir El Haradadi uh, scores a really, really nice goal. Uh, I was a little bit expecting more of West Ham, but you know, also I know in, in injuries and, and so on. And probably Sevilla is just a step too far. But you know, we have uh, another game in the week and only 1 nil probably is uh, enough. I was a little bit flabbergasted that I didn't see anything un until I watched the highlights this morning between Atalanta and Bayer Leverkusen because to me, this is the fun manager, but it proved everything that it should be. I mean, Arangis gives uh, Leverkusen an early lead who had already hit the crossbar before that. Then Atalanta turned on Malinowski. Yes, Ukrainian guy. We have Ukraine shirt back there as well. Uh, makes it 1 1. And just a few minutes later, he assists Muriel, who all and, and second assist uh, right after for, for, for Luis Muriel. Then Muriel with a mega chance where. Uh, um, what 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 was the name? Finnish national team goal goalkeeper makes a mega save. I mean, Muriel just with blank. He has the op of the the, the, the Radetzky and he just pulls out with the leg. And you and, and you can see how Muriel then walks out. That this was a great save because I mean, how did you miss this one? And then Musa Diaby may make it even in the 63rd 3 2. So it was a lot tighter, but overall, I think Atalanta fully deserved that win. Barca against Galatasaray, uh, probably the disappointment of the evening. Yeah, Barca had more of the game. Uh, yeah, they were probably um, uh, the, uh, the better team and so on. But it was not really convincing. I mean, there was one huge chance where I 
think it was a run by uh, Adama Traore and Obama Young with uh, a bicycle kick into Frankie de Jong who then hits the post. I think this was the biggest chance but other than that it was rather tame and Galatasaray actually had then scored a goal that was taken off for offside. So um, this was not the Barca and I gotta say as great as Barca were like um, uh, one or two weeks ago suddenly I think already over the weekend a little bit of sheen is coming off again. So uh, we all said Barca might be the best team around and now it's going uh, back again. So um, hold the horses I still think a Barca will go through but this was not a good performance yesterday overall Gradasaray also made it hard for them by being very 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 defensive but what can I can I do another surprise result uh Braga beating Monaco I mean if you would have asked me between the two Portugal against France matchups I would have got it completely the other way around I never saw Braga beating Monaco 2-0 Never in, in, in my life. Ruiz in the third and then laid on his uh, uh, almost a stoppage time. Oliveira makes may, may make it 2-0. Uh, absolutely surprising result. As was, nah, maybe, maybe not, uh, Rangers against uh, Juventus Vesta. I think it was not necessarily a surprising result, but I think the result was a one, if not two goals, too high. Um, if they, those were all correct the decisions, but Germania Sesta had three goals disallowed for offside. And two of these, one would have been a 1 0, the other one would have been a 1 1. So in the opening 15 minutes, things were really going, going on going crazy. As I say, with Germania Sesta scoring two goals for offside, Tavernier with a, a penalty that honestly. Yes, there was contact there. But before the contact was there, uh, the Rangers player actually had lost the ball already. So I felt it a little bit of a soft penalty there. Uh, and it went on VAR and the referee had a pretty good view on that. So I really didn't think that it, 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 this was uh, um, a, a, a penalty that way. And then uh, another goal this is allowed. And Mo Moreos with a great shot makes it 1-0. Wa but then Katai misses even a penalty. Great penalty save again. And so everything was going uh, against Germanus Vesta and in the end the Rangers get a pretty convincing 3-0 win. But I think that game was a whole lot tighter than uh, the results might suggest. Now uh, in next week we have of course the return legs. Um, the early legs I think have a little bit more thunder with Leverkusen, Atalanta and Galatasaray Barca in there. Uh, but the late ones also. When Frankfurt Betis, uh, I don't think it's done yet. And uh, of course, West Ham against Sevilla is a big one. As for uh, pro probabilities, I know you don't have the graphs in here because I go now very low level. But um, Leipzig, who are already through to the next round, are at the moment the top fav for favorites. But of the teams that I have played, it's uh, Barcelona and Sevilla. I have both now a 68% chance of advancing Barcelona, though the slightly uh, better rated team. Atalanta also in there, but this is 17, 14, 11, 10. Is kind of the chances so Leipzig, Barcelona, Sevilla, Atalanta are uh, the top top teams with uh, Lyon and Frankfurt a little bit behind, but they have really good um, chances of it, of advancing. The best chance of course the Rangers with a 98% chance of advances based on their three nil win. Moving over to the Conference League, um, we had Pauk beating Kent. Or Ghent. I think it's Kent, but uh, you know, I'm, I might become completely wrong there. Uh, in a game that, what shall I say, uh, it was a tight affair where Ghent was largely uh, dis disappointing. Uh, Kurtic gave with a deflected free kick the 1-0 uh, lead to uh, Pauk. Um, who then couldn't really capitalize more, and, and I think if, 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 if more so is that Kurt, that Kurtic will be missing and Villarinia will also be missing the next um, uh, match. So uh, that game is still very much in the balance, but a good win for Park, who at home are really, really hard to beat. Partizan against Feyenoord was one of those. I mean, uh, with Dutch teams in the Conference League, you got very entertaining games. That I can surely say. Feyenoord all over the better team. However, for a long time, it seemed like the Partizan could pull the upset by be, be, be being absolutely clinically. Nacho with the first shot on goal scores, 
the one nil and immediately signals yeah i have to be uh changed and uh tonstra after a really nice sinistera uh assist sinistera man of, of of the match makes it one one and then feynman actually probably should have um take tank leader although there were also good chances for power partisan partisan through jovic makes it two one right after the half so they took two twi twice the lead but then it is all and i mean all fair not from that one sinistera wonderful dribbling uh plays it to Dessas 2-2 uh Hattrid makes it 3-2 then uh since with another one of those goals and i i i think that that dream was ahead had had the 3-2 because because it wasn't clear so he assists uh Dessas, then uh sets the whole thing thinking up but it doesn't get assist and then the 4-2 i mean just boom into internet uh goal of the evening and then uh tunstra makes it 5-2, really putting Feyenoord squarely on the way to the next, next round. Told you everything about Slavia against Lask. Vitesse losing at home to Roma, despite having two golden chances to take a 1-0 lead. And when you don't make the chances, Sergio Oliveira makes it 1-0. Uh, yeah, that, that, that Oliveira that actually uh, put out Juventus last season. Uh, he's now for Roma, um, he, but he also gets the himself sent off. But Roma hold on to that uh, win. And Roma seems to be one of those teams. This is calm competition that actually could go deep, but let's see. Well, they, they were last year in the Europa League, also, also far. Uh, that uh, will probably be ruining the fact that there is no um, VAR in the Conference League. Yes, they find themselves down through Pellegrino or uh, in the first, first half. They get a very late equalizer through uh, uh, Abu Khlai. But then a penalty to open out. Clearly the ball is played, but the penalty is given. And then um, Solbach makes it 2-1 for Bode Klimt. And the Norwegian fairy tale does continue. Also was surprised that they didn't show anything about Leicester Ren. Uh, this rather went with OM against Basel. I guess because of Basel, uh, Heinz Lindner, the former Austrian goalie, uh, national team team, team goal goal was playing. But I think Leicester Ren was probably the marquee matchup of the round. Uh, it went all Leicester's way, though. Uh, it was uh, all Brighton and Ian Nacho later lay, on. May, may, may to, yes, there were some chances, some, some but I think overall it was a uh, deserved win for Leicester. Marseille should have led by way more goals than they did. Uh, and then Sun and, and Sun leads, um, you know, had, had to nearly through. Uh, two Milik goals and then suddenly Esposito in the 80th make, makes 2-1 and then Basel could have probably even snatched an equalizer because Marseille also threw everything away. But the game of the evening was in Eindhoven and I didn't expect it. Well, first of all, how naked did those Copenhagen jerseys look without a sponsor? But that was an absolutely crazy game because for all the possession, all contact and control the PSV had of that game, they didn't have any defending. And so... Uh, should have Kopman should, should have scored got him earlier. Then Johannesson makes it one of a one nil. Hakpo gets it back to a one one, and then uh, pressing forward. But if you don't have any defense, what do you want to do? Because uh, Beal right after the the one one maybe make, makes make two and then Leraga after um, I think Beal already missed another big one. Uh, that, that that was clear of the line makes it three one, and at, at that moment you think what is PSV doing? Uh, PSV. To the credit, come storming back, but um, make it 2 3 through door. Now, now, now take, take a shot, and a little bit later, Kakbo misses a penalty. Then he makes it uh, a few, few, a few misses, 3 3, and, and you think, yeah, now it's all going pace way this, even with the missed pen penalty. But then Beal scores a 4 3. So Harvey makes it 4 4. And then Kopang should have won it in overtime, uh, in stoppage time. An absolute mad game. I was goals everywhere. Uh, resulted I didn't expect, but I am really very much looking forward to that return leg because what defending was there? I mean, you know the PSV is probably the better team, but Kopman gave 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 it all and took um, really hit PSV where it hurts most. So absolutely an entertaining game, and I'm very much looking forward to. The return leg, which will actually be this will be the early game, and I really hope they show of, of that one and don't and don't give me a Basel Marseille anymore or something like that. Um, as I said, I think maybe the early games have a little bit more uh, in the Conference League. The late games, yeah, 
I think it's all about Hent against Pauk uh, there. So let's see. As for uh, chances of winning the Europa League, now it is a three way tie with Feyenoord just slightly ahead of Roma and Leicester, but it's all down that Feyenoord is more or less through to the next round. Roma has a 90% chance, Leicester had an 88% chance. So um, those team neck to neck. Um, Slavia, of course, more or less through. Uh, Marseille also having a good chance uh, there. PSV are now only 49% chance, so it's still very, very much a toss up. Uh, the fun thing is, thanks to Feyenoord, with former last cup at Intrana, beating uh, Partizan. Partizan is now the least likely team to win it. Ahead at last moves one ahead, just because they have a teeny tiny chance because they're playing at home. So, yeah. In any case, this was it for me from what's happening uh, yesterday and actually Wednesday, Wednesday as well. As I said, despite a loss, which I kind of saw coming, so it doesn't hurt as much. But, and you know, I actually am not have, unhappy if they get out of the Europe and, you know, focus a little bit on the league. Uh, let's see where, where to go. But it was an ent entertaining evening. Please let me know what you thought about the matches yesterday. Give me a thumbs up. Enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will uh talk to you soon <laughs> bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day